Before we start, I'd like to say that you will find the template in my GitHub repository and there's a link in the description. And also, if you guys got questions or you get stuck, make sure you join our Discord channel where we talk in depth NiFi and other data engineering topics. Before we jump in and we give a couple of examples of how we can use the merge content, let's go and explain the merge content processor properties. By default, the merge strategy, it's beam packing algorithm. We have two options, beam packing and defrag. Let's go over and I'll explain what does the correlation attribute means. Basically, you can specify an attribute here that will be present in all the flow files and used to group all the flow files together. The minimum number of entries. So the minimum number of entries specify how many flow files must exist in a bin before is marked as complete and a merge will run. If it's set to one and your incoming queue has one file in it or one flow file in it, the bin will be marked as complete and routed to success without any merge basically. The maximum number of entries specifies the maximum number of flow files that can exist in a bin before the bin gets merged. If you had a thousand flow files, files on an incoming queue but only wanted to merge 100 at a time then this should be set to 100. Let's go to the next property minimum group size. The minimum group size uh, you specify it as the cumulative size of the bin. Flow files in the bin will not be merged until the minimum size is reached. So for example flow files that are 1 bytes each, and your minimum group size is 20 bytes. That means when that particular group size reaches uh, that total then a merge action will be initiated. Maximum group size. Basically, um, you can specify the maximum size of each bin. Uh, flow files will continue to bin until next flow file would exceed its configuration bin size. The next file that comes in will go to the next bin and get ready for merge. Max bin age. Max bin age specifies how long a bin can stick around before it's merged, regardless of the other configuration setting above. A good example would be, I have a merge strategy of minimum five entries and I have a requirement here that no matter what merge file every one hour so if in that hour I don't have five files to merge and whatever files I need in the queue if it's above zero will be merged and then maximum number of bins this property uh, specifies the number the maximum number of bins if flow files have been placed in let's say 100 bins and the next flow file does not qualify for any of those existing bins the oldest bin it's forced to be merged so a new bin can be created for this new file. Now, the delimit the strategy. This is used as the output. It determines a header, a footer, and a demarker. It point to flow file continuum respective content or the values of the properties should be used as content. You have three options. You can point to a file. So if we select the file and say, okay, you're provided with three, uh, three values here, header, footer, and demarker. In this case, if you go with header, you have to specify a file where the header will be found. And the same for the footer and the same for the, the marker. If you choose to do text option, then in this case, you just place, okay, this is my header, footer, whatever you want as a footer. And this is my demarker. You can have it as a comma um, or you can have it as a new line. And that is the configuration. And those are the main options when we're talking about the properties that the merge content contains. Now let's go and talk about the merge strategy, the defragment strategy. The defrag strategy requires for the incoming flow file to carry some particular attributes. The defrag algorithm combines fragments that are associated by attributes back into a single cohesive flow file. The attributes required for this defrag algorithm to work are fragment.identifier, fragment index, fragment count, and segment original file name. Now let's talk about the bean packaging algorithm. The bean packaging algorithm generates a flow file populated by arbitrarily chosen flow file. In this case, using this particular strategy here, you can also use correlation name attribute or you can choose one of these strategies below. So let's go over some examples. So let's explain how the defragmentation strategy works. So in this example, what I have here, I have a custom text, which is comprised of five lines. Imagine that you have a flow file being generated and this flow file contains a set of lines. What I wanna do, I wanna split the line. I wanna split the flow file. So you see, we get five lines. 
If we go and observe this, the attributes that this particular split contains, we can see that we have the fragment count, the fragment identifier, the fragment index, and the fragment size. And if you recall, we also have the segment original file name. These attributes will automatically be used by the merge, the merge content. And if we see here, we are going to set a header. In this case, we're going to set a footer and we're going to demark it using a new line. Create a new line here. It's shift enter. And let's apply. When we run this, we're going to get a single output file here. If you see observe, you see now we have a new file and it's going to pretty much reconstruct the initial flow file. But now we have a header line and a footer line. I should have added a new line before the footer and a new line after. But if you see the construct, it's in the same order. There, there is a catch here. So if you lose one of the fragments and the merge will not occur, let's go ahead and do the following. Let's run this once and observe what happens when we lose one of these splits. Let's go down and create a route strategy here where we want to remove the last part of our split and observe what happens to the merge content operator. So we're going to do a route on attribute. We're going to drag it on a canvas and then connect the outcome splits to the route on. And for this example, we're going to use the fragment index in this case. So let's use the where, wherever the fragment index is five, I want you to route it to connection. So I'll call it is five, then use a bit of expression language and evaluate this fragment index a equals, remember this fragment index equals five, I want you to route it to this connection. Let's route the unmatched, which are not five, and let's route the matched, which is five here. And now let's run this processor. Let's run our merge. We can see that nothing is happening, basically. And why nothing is happening? Well, by default, this particular merge algorithm requires you to have the same number of fragments coming that matches the fragment count in the attributes. So if we look at the queue right now, we don't have any flow files in the queue because they are put in the bin. So if you look at the particular queued attribute here, you see we have this particular fragment, we have five and the merge processor expects five elements, not only not only four. So if we're going to do the following now and say, let's route this entry now into our merge. We can see that a new file was generated after we reunited our missing fragment. All right, so that's a wrap for the defragmentation strategy. Let's now move to bean packaging algorithm strategy, which is the default strategy for merging content. So in this example, we're going to demonstrate how we can merge every thousand flow files using a single bean with no delimiter. So in this example, what I have, let's look at the properties. Um, I have one processor that will generate me 5,500 lines because I had this connection queued up. I'm going to tell him, okay, I want you to merge in batches of 1,000 entries, which is minimum 900, 1,000 maximum. And the rest is going to stay as default. We're going to use only one bin, one uh, bin for this example. Let's run this one and see what happens. If you see right now, in this case, we're still going to get some leftovers, but we we have five bin merged. Our merge strategy has been respected. So we can see that the merge count was a thousand. The reason of the merge, the bin being merged was max entry threshold. Read. That's correct. But we still have some leftovers here. What happens with the leftovers because and how the merge strategy make this happen? So basically, if the current flow file queue satisfy the min and max number of entries, the merge will be triggered. The leftover flows in the queue that are less than the min and max number of entries will be then be tried to be evaluated against the max bin age. But since we haven't set any max bin age and see it will be unlimited, so it's not it's not set. If this is not, if this is satisfied, let's say this would be every 10 seconds, then a merge will be triggered. If not, the flows will be maintained in the queue until we get more records. And let's demonstrate how that will be. So let's say we stop it and let's start it again. Again, nothing will happen. See? The records are still going to be there. Let's add 999. Yeah. And let's see what happens. Now the record has been merged because again, you see, we have a minimum of 999 and a maximum of 1000.
All right, so before we move on to the next example, we're going to show how multiple pins with no delimiters um, work. Merge. Let's go back to this flow and make some changes to the merge operator. What we'll do here, we're going to change the run schedule of this initial merge to run every 60 seconds. And if we look in the property, we're going to leave the min maximum number of bins in the same property. Basically, this is going to run one every 60 seconds and it's going to evaluate that strategy for the incoming flow file. So let's bring 5,000 flows in the queue. And now let's go over the configuration of this merge content where it's pretty much the same. And if you look here, let's put it back to, let's put this one to 60 and go to the properties. So I'm going to have five bins instead of one. And let's see what happens. So let's bring 5,500 rows here as well. First, let's run this bin and say, okay, start. If you see here, we only had two runs basically here. And he is waiting for the trigger job to do the next schedule run. So the fact that it's it's tied up to a single bin, it will only use one bin to accumulate the merges. This one has the same configuration, running on a schedule every 60 seconds, but we have five bins. So let's run this one and see what happens. If you see here, run all five merges because every run he consumed five bins so that's the difference between having five bins for your example and having one bin let's go to our next example now and see how we can merge flow files using multiple bins with the limiter header and footer so first let's bring some flows in the queue and let's go over the merge properties. The same as before, we have maximum number of bin five, and you can see that our delimiter strategy is text, and we want our header to be called header. And if you see here, I add a new line, basically type header and then shift enter, press okay. My footer, type footer, I go to the beginning of the line and press shift enter, and my demarker is gonna be a new line. At the beginning of the line, press shift enter. You can choose whatever you want here. You can even use a expression language or even a parameter coming from a parameter context definition. All right, so let's apply and run this process. Again, the same definition is in the past, so we're going to be left with 500 rows in the queue. But if we're going to go here and we look at the queue and we're going to look at the flow file, we can see that files footer with a new line and with a header. Now let's move on to merge flows using bin size. The definition is going to be the same. We're going to generate some files. At this time, the merge has a different definition. In this case, we have a minimum number of entries of one or a maximum number of entries of one million. But if you see here, the minimum group size is set to 1000 kbytes and the maximum group size is set to 1000 kbytes. By the way, if you hover over this, you can have this as kbytes, you can have it as bytes, you can have it as megabytes, or you can have it as gigabytes, or you can have it as terabyte or even petabyte if you want to. In this case, we're going to keep it as kilobytes. And the mix max bin age is not going to be set. And we're going to preserve the header, the footer, and the markers in the previous example. Now, what happens here? When we choose the bin size, let's open up. If the current flow files in the queue satisfy the min and max bin size, then the merge will be triggered. Else, if the queue does not accumulate more flows to satisfy the min and max bin size, it will evaluate the bin age. In this case, this parameter here that we have not set. If this is not set, then the merge will not be triggered until these properties are satisfied and the flows will be maintained in the queue. Let's see what happens here. So we, we told this one, okay, I want you to merge every 1000 kilobytes and we have in the queue, we don't have enough in the queue. Let's see what happens. If you see right now, do a refresh, nothing actually happened. We have multiple tasks running here, trying to read the queue, but nothing happens. Let's go ahead and stop this one and add some more flow files to the queue to reach that thresholds. Right. So now we reach the threshold of 1.2 megabytes, which is defined in my settings. And let's trigger this one. Now we can see something is happening actually. And he merged the bin. And if we look into the queue and we look at the merge reason, it tells us, hey, max bytes threshold has been reached. That's how we merge using the bin size. Right, now let's move on to merge flows using bin age. 
So let's go over the, the definition of the merge content processor. So in this case, what well, we have a minimum number of interviews of 999, maximum of 1000. Uh, now the minimum group size is going to be 1000 megabytes. Let's make this some. Um, and now we have the max bin age set to 10 seconds. And we're going to use one single bin for this example. Let's explain what happens here and how this is going to be triggered. In the case of the bin age, if the current flow file queue satisfies the min and and max number of flows then the merge will be triggered so the min and max else the bin age will be evaluated and once it's evaluated successfully will trigger the merge action so in this example let's bring some flow files and we see we have 1400 flow file and our definition says okay merge every 999 or 1000 so we're gonna start we can see that one merge happened but the rest are still there remember we had the bin age set to 10 and now the second one triggered as well so if you look in the queue our first merge happened because of max entry threshold reached and the second one is because of the timeout so timeout is generated or the message timeout has been generated by the bin age our final example, merge flow file using a correlation attribute. If you remember at the beginning, we looked over the properties and merge has a correlation attribute. In this case, we're going to use the attribute called attribute and we're going to leave the following configuration. Minimum number of entries 40, maximum 40 and the max bin age let's leave it to 20 seconds and we're going to output the delimiter to matter footer and the mark and we're going to work with three number of bin let's see what we're generating here so we have one generate flow file that will instantiate an attribute called attribute with a value of one and we have some data here one line dollar bar. let's go over the next one and see this one what it does so we have an attribute with a value of two and we have a two line of blah blah, blah. and for the first for our third one the same three line of data blah blah, blah and the end so let's start our flows and put some data in the queue uh, each of them all right so what i did before this example i've set up the queues to to be maxed out at 1200 and 100 for the and you remember we had a merge strategy that needs to do minimum number of entries of 40 and maximum of 40 and then the max bin age will trigger at 20 seconds let's run this one and see what happens if you see all of the the values have been populated with success or have been passed with success but in this case for the for the strategy where we have the attribute tree 20 of them are still left in the queue because 100 divided by 40 equals 80 that means yes and now finally when the last flow file went through was triggered by the max bin age and if we look in the queue and we'll evaluate the last one 33rd we can see that the reason was timeout and the merge count was 20. as for the others max entry threshold has been reached based on the number of entries and now let's go to see how the flow file looks like because we know we did the merge based on the uh, correlation attributes so basically all of the files should have been merged together in batches of 40 carrying the same attribute so let's go and look at the queue and let's take our first one so we can see that the correlation attribute was one and the count count number was 40 and now let's review the flow file so we can see here that we have only records were merged with a value of one coming from the attribute one so this is a good example of how you can receive multiple streams of data and you want to merge them based on relation attribute that the flow file carries with it